This webinar is on low capacity, low cost, high value force machines. Morehouse currently offers two machines that fit into this category. They are a portable PCM and a mechanical tensiometer calibrator. We also offer a 10,000 pound benchtop machine. A little different, it's not in this webinar, but if you're thinking, hey, I'm doing mid-force or I need to do some crane scales that are 5,000, 10,000 pounds, we have that machine available, which is the 10,000 pound bench top. So, very passionate about making good uh, measurements, so I'll be giving you every bit of information I can during this webinar. Probably a lot of information that just comes to mind from speaking with people uh, that have presented me with problems they face when doing uh, low force calibration or when calibrating cable tensiometers. Uh, there's a lot involved in creating the presentation, uh, so there's no way for really to complete all of it or recollect everyone's uh, comments or questions. That's why you have the chat bar to answer, to ask those questions and have them ask, but this is really a, a, a near and dear to my heart uh, on, on these two things because there's a lot of problems with low force calibrations that are unresolved. And when you make a bad measurement or you, don't, or you do not know you're making that bad measurement and you send it off somewhere, then they make that measurement. Now this affects quality, this affects all kinds of things in other organizations, it, it, and it can be at times it can be uh, detrimental um, and it can impact the bottom line and impact other people's safety. So my name is Henry Zumbrun. I'm the president of Morehouse Instrument Company. Contact information is here. Feel free to reach out. If you have a question after the webinar, feel free to reach out. You, you'll get sent the PDF slides. Um, feel free to reach out, contact me, call, email, phone. That's me this guy talking right right now. So what we do, or what specifically Morehouse does, we manufacture force calibration products. We calibrate force measuring equipment using standards with very low uncertainties. These standards allow us to lower uncertainties of equipment sent to us for calibration. We manufacture all of the machines shown in this webinar, and most importantly, you know, we help labs make better measurements. That's really what we do. Um, so educate, 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 and Hopefully, there'll be some content in today's webinar that you can pick up and use, and it will help you to make better measurements in the future. So, what we're going to cover, uh, we're going to cover an introduction to the calibration problem solved by the 2,000-pound Morehouse Portable PCM and the mechanical tensiometer calibrator. This is our new product uh, as of the end of last year. There's a specific need in industry to calibrate cable tensiometers. There's all kinds of equipment to do some, all to do so, all kinds of methods. This machine do, does quite a bit. Um, so it's a very, very versatile. And if you're interested in getting into this or if you're currently calibrating cable tensiometers, it's going to be a, a good machine. So, and then we'll talk about the, also our PCM, which has been about two years now. Um, we've done some refinements, perfected uh, improvements, refinements, perfected things, improved the alignment, uh, really, really minimize the errors uh, as much as possible in, 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 in these two machines. So, first question, and as again, you can use chat bar, what equipment is currently being used by your company to calibrate low force devices? And really, what are the current, challenges to calibrate uh, this equipment. If you think about it, some common answers uh, I get are stacking weights. You know, you have a technician, they want to do a 500 pound handheld force gauge. Now they have to stack 50 pound weights on and off to calibrate that handheld force gauge. So that process takes a bit of time. In tension, it's fairly easy. In compression, you're making some kind of fix. Typically, you're making some kind of fixture, and that's a problem. Um, another one is that many people do not know is the off-center loading. What happens? You know, all these gauges are designed with a bit of different centering distances, so the, the proper adapters, if you're not stacking weights or holding it somewhere, uh, there's going to be an issue. Uh, to mount the devices in the machine, you know, in your machine or how you generate the force. And, of course, safety issues. Uh, and those are with both. Uh, if you're using a 
testing machine, which really goes pretty fast, uh, that could destroy the gauge. If you're using uh, stacking weights, someone could easily drop a weight on their foot. They can have ergonomic issues. They can have other other things, but we'll we'll discuss these in in a bit of detail. So. Issues with stacking weights are usually, you know, it's usually slow and dangerous uh, ergonomic issues, especially on the 500 pound, the 1000 pound, you know, force gauges, a little 10 pound device, you're playing, you know, you're typically stacking one pound weights, it's like playing uh, Jenga a little bit in uh, compression, so you really don't have that centering, all center with weights and, and some other things. And the biggest problem when we when we start going into this and uncover things when people say hey I failed my proficiency test or I have this this issue my the numbers are not matching uh, it's often because they're using mass weights and mass weights are not not appropriate to do force measurements unless they're corrected for force which includes uh, correcting for gravity air density and material density so if you're using mass weights um, not 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 so good uh, those mass weights need to be corrected we have several blogs on correcting them because we're finding that in industry a lot of people do this and it's not only with with just this it's with um, weighing it's with lots of things that people even torque measurements uh, the other day we found that someone was failing a proficiency test and it, it may have been because they were using mass instead of force weights and now torque is specifically force times length so not mass times length so there's a blog there you get the PDF you can go look and how to correct uh, using using if you're using mass weights you can correct correct them back to force it's gonna be those errors are gonna be anywhere from probably if you're in the US from 05 percent to 0.185 percent now if we look at that 0.185, most of these handheld force gauges or most of these devices are 0.1% of full scale, or they have you know accuracy specifications of uh, of applied load. If you're if you're using mass weights, the device that you're trying to calibrate is 0.1%. You could be out by as much as 0.185. So you're you're, you're going to call something or adjust something in that's really not in, then it's going to go downstream, and someone else is going to use this and use it and use it and use it. And everybody's going to be out. Uh, not really good for metrological traceability. The other thing with force gauges, handheld force gauges, is all manufacturers did different things. Um, they have, you know, different designs, different loading profiles, so require, so they require different centering fixtures for alignment. If the line of force is not pure, a large measurement error should be expected. So really, if you're not pure, uh, you don't have the right centering distance, you're not in line with the force being generated, you're going to have some misalignment. That misalignment on these types of uh, instrumentation, there's usually some of them have S-beams in, some of them have other types of cells in. It's not going to be, uh, the error sources are going to be really large and the device is not going to be very repeatable um, when you go and do the second run, if you do a second run. So we have L bracket kits are available for tension and compression calibration of handheld force gauges. These kits simplify setup and reduce errors with stacking weights. The kit they can be used in both the mechanical tensiometer and PCM. They can be used in cow machines, dead weight machines. They can be used in a lot of different a a applications. And if you look at these, you can see there's a lot of different holes cut and a lot of centering holes. There's there's quite a bit to this kit as far as uh, the the variations, but it allows most people to calibrate about you know 90 uh, 95 percent of the instrumentation that that's out there and we're constantly adding uh, we're finding people that need more uh, we can we can absolutely add additional hole pattern patterns to for your devices if you have them that if they're not already listed or covered um, then we have um, this is a button load cell so we we're talking about handheld force gauges a lot of other instrumentation sold by many manufacturers making small load cells fit in fit in nice areas to make you know small force measurements but when these devices have to be calibrated they're very susceptible to misalignment again um, they have large measurement errors uh, if the slightest bit of misalignment happens. So what we've done is we made adapters. The picture here shows uh, a manually aligned. What most people do, they put this button on on something flat. Uh, they put a flat piece on it, and then they 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 put the force. They exert the force, uh, apply the force to the device, record the reading. Well, we did that, and we you know 
rotated the data and we had an error of 1.045% when we did this in a controlled, uh, controlled test in our dead weight machine. Then we, uh, our engineer had designed some adapters. Then we tested with what happens when we use these adapters that, you know, concentrate that force to the center line. And when we use the adapters, we had a 0.2% error. Still not the greatest um, load cell, but a 1% uh, error is, is, you know, 5.25 times greater than a 0.2% error. So these, these adapters drastically um, improve uh, the repeatability and reproducibility conditions of the measurement. There's a picture of them. Uh, there's, we have them both for, I showed the picture of a button cell. Also have them for washer cells. Again, these are really common in industry. So these adapters, if you need to calibrate this type of, these type of load cells, these adapters will help you on your end uh, produce better results as far as the repeatability condition and the reproducibility commission, condition of your measurements will be much, much better with these adapters. Alignment issues. So I said earlier uh, about an S-beam, a lot of those handheld force gauges actually have or design, so they have like an S-beam inside of them. Here's an actual S-beam load cell, and uh, this is misalignment of any force measuring device will often result in a large measurement error. Yeah, the S-beam load cell, uh, for those that have seen, we have videos on this, we have everything else on it. This is a S-beam load cell. Uh, this one was tested, and it had a 0.75% misalignment error. Now, the purpose of this slide is to say, okay, so what is that? 0.75%. My calibration provider calibrated the device. They gave me a cal thing that says plus or minus point, you know, point, point 0.1% of uh, full scale. I'm, I'm great. Da, 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 da. Um, this, this particular load cell, if you put in the 0.75% misalignment error, at capacity at 100%, it's 88%. 0.606 pounds on a 10,000 pounds. So, 0.1% uh, is 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 much much lower than the 0.75% misalignment error you'll get if you do not use the proper centering adapters um, and everything else. So the overall uncertainty again went from 10 to 86.6 pounds with just slight misalignment. And those pictures are aligned versus misaligned, and it's it's very very difficult to uh, to tell. Uh, if you look at the bottom centering circles, you can you can kind of see the the picture on the right is is aligned better than the than the picture on the left in, in this example. So misalignment can cause errors that exceed one percent of applied reading on certain load cells and other devices. Using the right adapters will help reduce these errors. These type of adapters are you know with the load cell. Typically, there's a shear web load cell. Uh, we talked about SPMs. The shear web load cells aren't as susceptible to misalignment. They're about 20 parts per million, uh, so that's 0.002%, a lot different than 0.75%. But in, regardless, the best best case is to align everything to have that vertical line of force pure, so you have your alignment plug and then alignment hole in a machine flat. And so typically you can machine a a hole that's relatively center, um, and you can put a, a alignment plug in it. So you machine things better than than people can measure with rulers, uh, calibers, or whatever else they they may want to use. So. In compression, using a ball adapter, picture top right, if the machine uh, has a ball adapter, often yields the best results. Our PCM and the, and the uh, mechanical tensiometers both come with adapters that have ball adapters, so you can use a ball adapter. If the ball adapter does not exist, a spherical alignment adapter, picture top left, will help align the force. Um, you know, from the previous slide, some load cells are just more sensitive to alignment and threading and uh, threat engagement issues, making adapters even more critical. If you haven't figured it out, uh, a lot of the stuff when you go back on blogs and everything else, the force calibration in general is not that difficult, but getting everything right, like the, the adapters, everything else, uh, that's, that's the difficult part. And, you know, you, you can use the right calibration provider. You can send your load cells to them. But if they fail to, you know, if you fail to replicate the adapters that they use or you don't have that open line of communications, you can even get the contract review of, oh, we're going to use this method, this, this, this. Everything can be right from a quality standpoint. But if you don't do that final step and no one's asking on, like, are you using the same type of adapters that the calibration, you know, your supplier is using? If they're using different adapters or different methods, you're going to have issues. So um, 
that's that's the speech on adapters and we have a lot more on that but uh the portable calibrating machine tension and compression calibrations uh in one step fine adjustment of calibration load lower risk of overloading small force instruments very very easy to overload small force instruments and other machines capable of calibrating handheld force gauges uh, eliminates the need for carry and stacking weights quick change all of this, uh, really, the machine provides the user with a fine and stable control on the applied force and offers a large working area, which which is long enough to test, um, you know, various instruments, various handheld force gauges, uh, et cetera. So when we look at this, uh, we look at it over a all the title of the webinar, you know, low cost, low force. Low cost compared to paying someone to manually lift weights onto a pan and take a reading, this, the, the the calibration can be done in the same setup. Low cost when compared against technicians sustaining an injury, and then low cost when compared against other systems that are not as versatile or have the proper adapters. So that's a main thing. People typically put this together as a kit. They get all the proper adapters. When they get all the proper adapters, that line of force is pure, less error. You're, you're calibrating instrumentation now that's uh, the customer or you know the company downstream is going to most likely have uh, a good device that's very reproducible and very repeatable. Um, high value when compared to paying someone to manually lift weights uh, or not getting the correct result by using the wrong adapters. High value in terms of versatility. This this machine can do, the pictures here, can do uh, S-type load cells, force gauges, handheld force gauges, button load cells, washer load cells, beam load cells. Uh, high value in terms of accuracy. The system typically, uh, most people, if they buy two or three load cells with it, are getting better than 0.03%. If they're buying two load cells, typically they're getting 05 And it, that all depends on what method they're using. ISO 376, ASTM E74, just an accuracy spec specification. So this is all going to vary. The assumption here is that the calibration on the references is done to e ASTM E74 and, and most, more than likely two or three load cells to, to achieve 0.03% or better. So then we're going to we're going to get into the cable tensiometers a bit and. Uh, the same questions, you know, what equipment is currently being used in your company to calibrate uh, cable tensiometers, uh, you know, and what are what are current challenges to this equipment? This one's really interesting because I, I, I called around and, and people are doing just different methods. I was not able to isolate a specific method um, to calibrate these type of uh, devices. What I what I found is people are doing, you know, taking seven readings, throwing away two. They're mad, you know, just throwing away two. Because it, it's 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 universally that these this is a hard calibration um to to perform. This machine pretty much simplifies it. Uh and what a cable tensiometer for those that are wondering is a device with an accuracy specification it's typically one to five percent of capacity force. Uh, they are used to check the tension of wire cables, typically used in aircraft rigging and and uh, textile manufacturing. So they use a force gauge to react against the cable via a riser and display the result through a gearbox onto a dial scale. The dial is often just a linear scale numbered zero through a hundred. A conversion table is then drawn up to convert the number to a meaningful result. Um, and then calibration. This is, I started talking about this earlier. Calibration is also done by loading to the same force point several times and taking an average of readings. The tensiometer should be calibrated based on use and other factors. Some common problems to watch for are physical damage, overstretching of the spring can happen when the correct riser is not installed for calibration, corrosion, and damage riser. So these, there's a, there's a chart that come with these that said use this riser for this cable. When you calibrate it, you load to a, specifically to a known force. Uh, most methods are like hanging weights. This is one I, you know, Google's great in this day and age. You can search things. Uh, and some people are using very questionable procedures. They're using a torque you know, a torque stand to back calculate the tension. So it's torque. You're back calculating the force, the measurements, and uh, the the length. You typically a three foot cable on on some of those systems, but they're really not known to back calculate torque. That's a that's a huge mess. And then there's there's a lot of design problems. This one I found on the internet, which was, you know, hey, let's tie this cable. Uh, let's put a weight bucket. Um, a common method is is fixing one point of the cable and stacking weights. That's pretty common, but then I found this one. Or even filling a bucket with the appropriate amount of weight to generate the force. Now we're back to, you know, mass is how do you know what the force is? You know, are, do you have a load cell somewhere that you're, you know, weighing the, these out and, and weighing in force or are you using mass again? 
So, and then if you're using this weight bucket method, um, anyone that's, you know, in quality or familiar with 17025 or, or other procedures, uh, anyone think the bucket method is uh, metrological, you know, metrologically sound or would it, pa would it even pass an audit? If you're going out to audit somebody and they're, how are you calibrating this? Well, I fill my bucket with water and then we apply, we know from, you know, the three quarter line that this is, uh, you know, uh, 50, 50 pounds of force. Where's the traceability in that? Uh, that's that's Im almost impossible to jump to that. Uh, I know the devices are pretty crude with a one to five percent uh, tolerance, but that's there's no way that's an acceptable practice, and you've you've lost traceability. So uh, our mechanical tensiometer calibrator mo model uh, PCM 2MD T1 easy to use solution for problems associated with calibrating force instruments and cable tensor meters tensiometers uh, properly up to 2,000 pound capacity. The machine provides the user with a fine stable control on the applied force and offers a large working area which is long enough to test tensiometer tensiometers on standard cables um, lengths of five feet up to five feet. Uh, this machine can do three feet, it can do two and a half feet, it can do up to five feet. I know the Air Force uses a lot of five foot cables, so we made it so we could do, you know, use as high. And some people may say, well, so what's the big deal? Five feet, three feet, two feet, one feet. Well, a one foot cable is not going to elongate as much as a five foot one. So it's, it is important to get that right cable length that replicates how it's being used. There's all kinds of problems with cable measurement. This, this particular system, it's, you know, the weight method, some, a method, the weight method, the force is always hanging somewhere, so it's only one fixed point. This is two fixed points. So when you actually go in and clamp the cable tensiometer, if you load it to 480 foot pounds, when you actually clamp it, it may go to 500. And after, after clamped is the right way to measure it. So there's a bit of a, a issue there with, with the, all the cable tensiometer measurements, but this provides a known ref relatively known reference with the with the load cell you can apply the force to the cable with the load cell turning the handle and you can clamp the cable tensiometer and record the actual reading on it and what it should be so and it and it has a safety shield so which we will talk about. The system is equipped with several time-saving features such that enable quality force calibration on a wide, wide range of force sensors. So we can do shear web load cells, S-type load cells, button cells, force gauges, beam load cells, all kinds of instrumentation. You can even do um, AP dynamometers uh, up to 2,000 pounds in it because it's, it's, it's long enough. Um, when you look at the mechanical tensiometer, we talked about the low cost. It's low cost when compared to paying someone to manually lift weights onto a pan and take a reading. Low cost when compared to, you know, a 90,000 plus dead weight type machine that, that has been, that we manufacture for, for this specific purpose of calibrating tensiometers. Low cost when, com you know, compared against technicians sustaining an injury. Uh, that cable snaps. What's going to happen? If you if you do not have that safety shield and you're loading to a thousand pounds and something gives on that cable, if somebody's in the way of that, it's going to produce uh, some serious scarring, probably, and maybe even death. Uh, un unfortunately, it's not a good scenario to be around uh, cables snapping. Uh, do quite a bit of damage. And then low cost when compared against a less accurate method of back calculating torque and not getting the right result. So that back back calculating torque method is just there's a lot of problems with it i know several people in industry are using those types of machines and thinking it's it's good to make the tensiometer reading when it's it, it in, in in fact is not and on the back calculating torque method the technician is is exposed on the you know horizontally if a cable does or or ever slips or breaks where there could be uh serious injury because I've not seen those with safety shields. I'm sure they exist, but I have not seen them. So high value cost when compared to paying someone to manually lift weights onto a pan and take reading. High value in terms of versatility, you know, right here we show with a AP dynamometer, there's load cells, cable tensiometers, calibrate almost, a, you know, any of the small instruments. Uh, high value in terms of the system has been a accuracy of better than 0.5%, same as the same as the uh, PCM2K. So 03 to 05 is typically what you achieve. Uh, that's quite 
quite good to do uh, to do a lot of uh, instrumentation. Point one percent devices, point you know even point oh five percent devices. You can have a one to one. That's that's not what this webinar is about. But uh, when we start talking about TURs and un uncertainties and everything else, uh, in this situation, uh, two to one uh, is 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 pretty good to uh, to do those. Uh, those handheld devices. Much better than the mass weights, much better than the alignment errors, much better than all the other things considered when you use the traditional old or generally accepted methods to calibrate some of this instru instrumentation where the results you think you're getting aren't really what you're getting when you when you stack it up against dead weights or or these type of this type of equipment with a you know a relatively known to uh, better than the O3. So all calibrations, a uh, little bit more about it. calibrations on reference load cells. All calibrations on load cells up to 120,000 can be done at Morehouse using our deadweight force machines known to, to be better than 002%. That's 20 parts per million. This provides a measurement traceability back to SI units, which is a requirement of accreditation. Blurb here, anybody saying I need calibration traceable to NIST, that does not exist. NIST... Uh, NIST is SI, so it's the, the proper terminology when you're talking about measurement traceability, measurement uncertainty, demonstrating that unbroken chain of measurements is uh, traceability back to SI. You can get that through an NMI, but traceability to NIST is hogwash and not good language. Everybody should delete that, remove it from, from, your, uh, from your vernacular um, to say. So... Conclusion, uh, thank you for your time. I have a couple more things and then I'll take questions. Proper calibration of several instruments discussed when the right adapters are used. Um, the keeping the technician safe, tensiometer calibration, reducing work-related injuries, confidence in the measurement results. You're getting the traceable chain of measurements uh, throughout the system, the right adapters, right alignment. You're going to fixture that UUT in either the PCM or the cable tensiometer and you're going to make good measurements. Uh, it's it's pretty easy. Uh, about 15 minutes of training and a technician can use the machine fairly well. So in addition to that, I have um, some other things. Uh, what we Last thing is, if you're unsure of your measurements or think your your current process is good, I would challenge you to do a PT uh, because a good good PT may reveal problems with fixtures uh, that we you know talked about earlier. And if you have those problems, if you're using mass or whatever, there some of them are very easily correctable. Sadly, not many people in the industry are doing the appropriate PTs, which is a whole another webinar and debate. But um, so. About ready to take training. We are about ready to take questions. Uh, a little bit more. We have upcoming training uh, April 30th through May 3rd. We have a statistical process control course, a two-day force fundamentals with uncertainty training, and then a half a day of what's new in ISO 17025 2017. This will probably be the last half day of what's new uh, because the standard's been out for about a year and a half, and there's there's several others that are that are talking about it. So we're also going to be uh, teaching and exhibiting at. MSC on April 18th, and uh, we're teaching load cells and force measurement at a combined regional measurement assurance program, uh, C-RMAP, on June 6th. And with that, I will end this webinar. Um, Grace uh, Hopper, which is an a excellent female in quality, uh, had this quote, and I love it. It says, one accurate measurement is worth a thousand expert opinions. So with that, I will open everything up and take questions. So anyone have questions, type, type, can type them in the chat bar. You see the chat. And um, with, as I fumble with uh, the audio here, I can unmute everybody. So everybody here is currently unmuted. So I will take, you know, questions either way if anybody anybody has them again this will, this will be sent out to everybody so if you have questions later on you can feel free to email me ask ask them uh, comments uh, critiques anything you want to say greatly considered so uh, I will stay on about a minute two minutes um, let someone if they have any questions if not um, well, I, I wish everybody a good day, and we'll, we'll go from there. But uh, so, so right now, uh, those that are live or those that are in the chat window, uh, uh, any particular questions that we can discuss? Comments? Deep freeze?
Anybody, anybody using the, the, the weight bucket method where you fill it with uh, water? So thank you all for your, uh, I'm not getting any questions, so thank you all for your time. Remember, this will be sent out uh, if anyone wants to view it later, or they'll get a PDF and, and everybody, anything else. So thank you, everyone. Uh, have a great day. Thank you for your time. Uh, take care. Thanks. Yeah, thank you.